Hello everyone, so welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the top 10 things you need to check on your PC in order to make sure it's running perfectly normal and at the best performance possible. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so there's no specific order on the rank of these tips. So the first one is going to be having two sticks of RAM at least. Having one stick of RAM is really, really bad. It's basically running in single channel and dual channel is basically where it's running at twice the bandwidth of single channel. So you wanna make sure you're on two sticks of RAM that are set in dual channel mode and that's gonna be slots two and four or one of three on your motherboard. Or if you have only two slots, then those two slots being completely filled are basically dual channel. So that's also a big thing. And now the second tip I have for PCs is make sure you're on an SSD. If you're not on an SSD in 2023, you are really behind and your PC is just taking way too long to load up. Make sure you upgrade to an SSD. M.2 is going to be a lot faster than SATA SSDs and it's going to have lower latency. So if you have a M.2 port on your motherboard, make sure to take advantage of that and actually get an M.2. So I'll be linking one of the best M.2 drives in the description. So now number three, make sure your PC is away from carpet because all that dust that's going inside your PC is lower in performance. And you also want to make sure that you're cleaning out the dust basically every two to three months out of your PC just because of the performance issues it causes with temperatures and static. A lot of people are going to say, how do I clean it? So there are different ways of cleaning the dust. Personally, I just use a wipe depending on what part I'm cleaning. So if I'm cleaning the front of the case, I use a wipe. I just wipe all the dust off. And if I'm cleaning the inside of the case, it depends. But for the inside of the case, I most likely can recommend either compressed air or try to use canned air, something like that. But you could probably take it out in the garage and use a leaf blower as well. So yeah. Now, moving on to number four, you want to make sure your temperatures are perfectly normal whenever running a game or running a task that you're doing on the PC. So a lot of people have an issue with CPU temperatures, and this is a really big issue I've noticed with a lot of clients, PCs and just PCs in general. A lot of the pre-builds come with coolers. They come with really low quality thermal paste. So the only real way to actually improve your cooling is to buy a new CPU cooler or just buy more fans. Now this obviously depends on what type of issue you're having. Now say for example, your graphics card is running a little bit too hot. The only way to actually prevent it from running hotter is either clean out the fans or if you have a blower card, just upgrade the card because the blower cards just suck completely. And what a blower card is, is basically a card with just a single fan. So if you have that, upgrade it. And if you have a Founders Edition, definitely want to upgrade that. Those are generally not that great. And let's say you have a decent car, decent cooling, but it's just running weird. The only way to actually get it to lower temperatures is to replace the thermal paste. A lot of the thermal paste that comes on GPUs pre-applied actually doesn't last that long. And over time, you want to repaste it. So that's kind of a process. You could just search some YouTube videos on that, but highly recommend doing that one. Now for other temperatures like CPU, just for a CPU, you want to make sure you have decent amount of thermal paste on the CPU and to actually make contact with the cooler completely. Basically, if you have a bad cooler, I mean, all, all you're going to have to do is just upgrade it. Liquid cooling is obviously better. There's all in one water coolers that you could buy from Arctic, from EK, from deep cool. It honestly depends on what type of CPU you have, but Generally, 280 millimeters to 360 millimeters is pretty good for a all-in-one water cooler. Now, for an air cooler, Noctua fans are pretty good. So that's like a, the cheaper option. You could go for air. So there's a Noctua U12S Redux, which is a $40 Noctua cooler. It does pretty good on older CPUs or six core CPUs. So if you have either one of those, you can grab it. But if you're on one of the newer CPUs, like a 13700K, 13900K, you definitely want to go for the 360 millimeter option. I've worked on PCs that just couldn't handle the heat with the air cooler. So you need a all-in-one water cooler if you're going to run something like an i9 1300 k or just a Ryzen 9 7900. So that's it for temperatures. Now we're going to move on to number five. So number five is going to be basically updating your BIOS. Now this honestly depends on what computer you actually have and what processor you have. Now for some of you, updating BIOS would actually just lead it to lower performance. But for most of you, say 13th gen, 12th gen, Intel, or one of the new Ryzen CPUs, you want to make sure your BIOS is latest just because 
they improve a lot of things and they fix common bugs. So this is especially true for people with DDR5 RAM. If you have DDR5 RAM, make sure your BIOS is updated to the latest. Now let's move on to number six. So number six is gonna be basically regarding software and this is regarding drivers. So typically the only drivers you'd want to update for your PC are network drivers, GPU drivers, and sometimes chipset drivers. I've noticed on the new Ryzen CPUs, for example, the X3D CPUs that just came out for Ryzen 9 and Ryzen 7, you want to make sure you have the chipset drivers installed just because they improve performance a ton. But for other CPUs, you might not see anything. So I'll take that with a grain of salt, but I'd make sure network drivers and GPU drivers are updated. Now, GPU drivers is kind of an issue because a lot of people always update them. The case is basically install the GPU driver that's related to your game. And if there is none, then just use the latest one or somewhat of an older one that you know other people use and have perfect performance with. Now, one of the older ones that I typically use is 472.12. So you could try that one out. However, if you are playing Call of Duty or any of the newer games, I'd recommend 526. 0.86 or above. Otherwise, don't update your GPU drivers every time a new one comes out. Not every single new one needs to be updated to because they have issues and bugs and because your GPU driver that you have currently right now would be perfectly fine if you have good performance right now. So moving on to tip number seven. Now this is mostly geared towards laptops, but if you're on a laptop, make sure to plug in a external monitor. It's gonna help a lot with latency and FPS. I've, it's been shown many, many times that plugging a monitor actually helps performance from the GPU. Now moving on to number eight, it's gonna be a past video that I've actually worked on and it's using the best USB ports on your motherboard. Now I kind of went way more in depth in the video that I had for this if for Ryzen CPUs where there is a CPU USB controller, which is faster and there is a chipset USB controller, which is slower. Now, obviously you want to be using CPU USB controller, which what, how I show it in the video is that's basically the main thing. It's actually, that's Verizon and I mentioned Intel very briefly, but for Intel, you just want to make sure you're using the two USB ports that are right under the PS2 port or just the USB port that whenever you open up USB tree viewer, it's connected straight to the USB root hub instead of connecting to a generic USB hub and things like that. So that's number eight. Now we're going to move on to number nine. So number nine is going to be regarding upgrading your actual PC parts. And now this obviously depends on what type of PC you have, what type of CPU you have, and what type of motherboard you have. Now, if you have a really bad motherboard, I'd obviously recommend upgrading that. Your motherboard controls basically everything on your computer alongside the CPU. So you want to make sure that it can handle the CPU and has decent VRMs to regulate the voltage and other things. Now, for RAM, if you have, let's say, 266 megahertz or somewhere around there, you want to upgrade to at least 3600 megahertz, or if you can't do that, just do 3200. Now, for RAM, you also want to make sure that the timings are low. You don't want 3600 megahertz CL18. However, that is decent but I'd highly recommend getting something like CL14, which is gonna be a little bit pricier, but it's definitely worth it because of the performance that you get in terms of FPS and lower latency. Now for CPU, this honestly depends on what you have right now, but if you're on a quad core CPU, you wanna honestly upgrade to an eight core. Six cores is kind of fine, but it also depends on your budget. But for most people, I'd recommend going for an eight core CPU, like a 13700K, 12700K, or a Ryzen, seven. However, I do recommend Intel over Ryzen, especially with this new generation. So make sure that you have a decent CPU that can handle decent RAM. So it can handle 36 megahertz CL14. And you want to make sure your power supply is good. So depending on the power supply, you might see a 50 to a 60% increase in performance. If you have a bad one, say for example, you have a thermal take one that's really old and it's really outdated and it's barely powering your system. If you upgrade that to, let's say, something like an RMX from Corsair, you'll definitely notice a big difference in FPS, a big difference in latency and all of that. So that's basically it for number nine. Now moving on to number 10. And number 10 is gonna be optimizing your PC. Now guys, this might be a little bit biased, but I do have an optimization service on my website and it's gonna be in the link in the description if you wanna book that. Now, optimizing your PC, obviously, this includes a lot of things. So this includes optimizing your BIOS settings, optimizing your Windows settings, optimizing your 
network drivers, optimizing your GPU drivers, and optimizing in-game settings and common apps. So I do all of that within my services. Obviously, I have two services on this complete PC session where I optimize the current Windows install that you have installed. And I have an advanced service where I install a custom OS that's stripped down from all the Microsoft bloatware and all the extra things that come with Windows. And that advanced service actually goes even farther than that and actually tracks your BIOS into a notepad. And I actually start editing some of the BIOS settings that are hidden in BIOS in there. And that helps tremendously in latency. So that's about it for this video, guys. If you liked it, like and subscribe. Comment down below what I should do next. Comment down below if this helped you. And I'll see you guys right in the next one. Peace.